Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome back to our one week online workshop come faculty development program on quality engineering and technological advances in material and devices. We will now start our fourth day, second session, and it will start with Dr. Sarvaranjan Pariya. Before he start his talk, let me introduce Dr. Pariya. Dr. Sarvaranjan Pariya is pursuing his postdoctoral program in the Department of Polymer Nanoscience and Technology with a research topic of commercialization of nanocarbon composites in sensor and biomedical industries. He is working, currently working in Yunbuk National University, South Korea. He is having more than six years of research experience in material science and nanotechnology. Prior to joining as a postdoctoral research, he did his doctoral program in Material Science Center, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. His research topic was inorganic and organic based flexible and efficient piezo <clears throat> triboelectric energy harvester for portable electronics application. During his doctoral program, he has dealt with organic, inorganic, and natural ferroelectric materials for the preparation of flexible polymer nanocomposite. The fabricated de devices well responded towards various mechanical stimuli, forces, frequencies, and pressure. From this standpoint, the devices find their applicability in various pressure, force, strain, sensor, which elucidates that the devices could perform as an energy harvester as well as sensor. During his MTech program, he worked on polymer and CNT based nanocomposite. With this expertise in nanocomposite fields, he has contributed to more than 30 peer reviewed journal publications in the field of material sciences. He has a total citation of seven, uh, more than 700 with the H index of 18 and I IF index of 22. Apart from his research career, he has also qualified GATE, EGC, CSR, EGC. So I would like to request Dr. Paria to start his talk. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, uh, Sharanjan. Can you increase your volume? Okay, okay. Okay, now it's okay? Uh, now it's better, but uh, you can increase your volume to, to some extent. Now it's okay? Now it's fine. Okay. Absolutely fine. Please start. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you are doing great in this pandemic situation. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the members of the faculty development uh, 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 this uh, workshop and today I want to talk uh, about some uh, a recent emerging alternative for renewable energy sources which is uh, harvesting electrical energy from various biomechanical motions. Before I start to composite based neurogenerator I would, I, I would like to say something about some historical background for the energy consum consumption and energy harvesting. After that, I will show you some recent applications. Then I will show you some connections of piezoelectric and triboelectric effect with, uh, with, some, uh, with some another fields. So uh, if you look at the uh, historical background, the energy consumption has started when the steam engine uh, came to the market, that is 1712. First commercial steam engine was invented by Thomas Newcomen. After that, uh, the second revolution has come when it was 1821 by Michael Faraday. So he, he invented uh, he invented that uh, the how to uh, uh, electrical energy to mechanical energy conversion. So by a by a generator. After that, it uh, the revolution has come in 1903 when uh, Wright brothers has invented a airplane. So now we are uh, staying in the Internet of Things, artificial in, in intelligence, and in the era of nano. So for running, 
all these internet of things and we need a gigantic amount of energy so we are basically depend on the energy fossil fuel that is based on coal and oil so uh, there is some serious issues because uh, day by day coal is diminishing and also some on burning those coals and oil we are uh, we are having some bad uh, uh, gaseous species so that is detrimental our uh, environment so people are looking for some renewable energy sources so there are several renewable energy sources like uh, photovoltaic effect thermoelectric effect and pyroelectric effect photovoltaic effect works when sunlight falls on the p and n heterojunction and that that sunlight will produce a, a exciton that is electron and hole separation that electron and hole separation will be stored in the battery and and with, with using that battery we will we'll get energy and, and on the other hand thermoelectric effect which works uh, on the uh, on the principle of uh, seebeck and peltier effect when two terminals uh, of a device is uh, thermally uh, thermally defined at th different thermal condition there will be some electronic movement in the external circuit on the other hand another exciting uh, technology is there that is pyroelectric effect which works as uh, when uh, temperature gradient is there there will be some polarization difference so those polarization difference will uh, those po uh, those polarization difference will uh, give the uh, electron movement in the external circuit apart from these uh, techn 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 technologies we have another kinds of uh, effect that is piezoelectric effect and triboelectric effect piezoelectric effect when it is it, it was first discovered by jacques and pierre curie in 1880 and uh, later uh, by lipman in 1881 so there are two kinds of piezoelectric effect one is direct piezoelectric effect and this converse piezoelectric effect actually piezoelectric uh, this term has originated from Greek word. Piezo means force, electric means electric field. So when you are applying force, you will get electric field. That is uh, that that means. So that is called direct piezoelectric effect. But when you are applying electric field, you will get in response some deformation of the material. That is called converse piezoelectric effect. So what is actually happening in the crystal? That is when you are applying stress the piezo charges will develop that piezo charges produces the piezo potential on the respective surface of the material and that piezo potential drives the electron in the external circuit as an example here you if, if, if you can see here that is uh, lighter when you are pressing that electric force electrical uh, that is uh, el that electric uh, difference will ignite the gas so another kind of uh, effect is that it's called triboelectric effect. So that there are four modes of triboelectric effect. Triboelectric effects is known to all from the ancient times. So when we are, as for example, when you are taking our clothes in winter season, then we will get some sounds. That sounds actually because of some static electric charge transfer. So when two layers are coming together, coming close, then there will be some electronic uh, transfer. So one will release electron easily, another will um, accept electron easily. So because of that electronic transfer and the respective charges will be developed on the respective electrodes. That is electrode, that charges will uh, will uh, govern the electronic moment in the external circuit. There are four kinds of triboelectric effect. One is vertically contact and sliding mode, laterally sliding mode, single electron mode, free, free standing mode. So in freestanding mode, uh, in single electron mode, there is no second kind of uh, uh, friction layer because it may be hand, it may be some uh, uh, tire surface, it may be any, any kind of surface. So on another surface is connected to the earth. So uh, this is the, uh, uh, these are the uh, five techniques are easily um, in now emerging field in the uh, energy harvesting technologies. So if we look, if we compare the technology in compare those technologies in terms of power density and uh, power efficiency, we can see that. So there will be uh, uh, piezoelectric effect and triboelectric effect are far better to other technologies in terms of power density and efficiency. So, and the, that's why our motto is uh, to harvest in electrical energies from several mechanical motions. 
there are several piezoelectric materials are there till to date those are kind of inorganic piezoelectric material and other kind of organic piezoelectric material so inorganic piezoelectric material is uh, in materials are having high piezoelectric coefficient which is very much uh, uh, needed for uh, showing a good piezoelectric output so and in the other hand it is um, it is efficient for energy conversion but those are having some serious issues that is between nature some are toxic due to presence of uh, cadmium lead and some are cost intensive on the other hand some uh, organic piezoelectric materials are there that that can be easily processable and lightweight and flexible but those are having low piezoelectric coefficient but and cost intensive and low availability so uh, we have to tune those uh, drawbacks to get the high output voltage performance of the piezoelectric nano generator so um, on the, uh, the as an example we have uh, polymeric material uh, pdma cellulose uh, P, uh, pvdf and its copolymer and in inorganic material zinc oxide barium titanate zinc stannate potassium niobate so in the bracket i have shown their spontaneous polarization value this spontaneous polarization value actually um, uh, governs the output performance of the piezoelectric nano generator so the material is having um, having a higher spontaneous polarization value will show the good piezoelectric uh, output so here is the fabrication techniques are there single crystal we can fabricate the single crystal for piezoelectric nano generator as well as ceramics as well as uh, polymer composite as well as polymer so we are basically emphasized on the polymer composite because uh, we we are incorporating properties of two for, for two materials one is polymer and another is ferroelectric material so on the other hand we, in addition to this the, there are some uh, triboelectric material so if we tabulate that those triboelectric materials we will get some positive triboelectric materials and some negative triboelectric materials positive means it will easily eject electron so a negative means it will easily attract electron so depending on their electrical affinity so we have we have um, got this type of table so we can see that from the materials point of view there are plenty of materials to uh, to be used for the fabrication of uh, piezoelectric and triboelectric nanogenerators so our main goal uh, was uh, a human motion based uh, piezoelectric and triboelectric generator uh, for energy electrical energy harvesting from uh, several biomechanical and mechanical motions so after harvesting those energy we can we can implement those energy to run the leds lcds hygrometer restores etc so why we are uh, very much fascinated about uh, human motion based so just uh, have a look here so if you see that we are, we can simply by uh, by moving our shoulder wrist elbow hip and knee we are actually wasting our huge amount of energy so that are that are waste mechanical energy so if we collect those energy so we can easily run such, such kind of devices like pacemaker coiler implant drug pump etc so those are actually accessible energy so which are actually we are wasting uh, every day so if we collect those energy we can utilize those energy for running several electronic devices so in our first work i uh, we have used um, uh, pvc and zinc standard based piezoelectric nano generator so P here pvc we have used because pvc you know that is very much uh, um, uh, good uh, in, in flame retardant properties and zinc standard is now it is, it is emerging uh, nano, nano nanoparticles so why we have used zinc standard nanoparticle if you have seen if you have seen here then you then you can you, you can uh, see here are some uh, piezo, uh, uh, it is had it has high polarization value from where it shows a high polarization value if you look at the crystal structure then you will see that the each uh, each crystal structure contains two types of octahedra one is sno6 another is zno6 so in sno6 the sn atom is displaced by an amount of 0.2 angstrom whereas in zno6 it, it the zinc atom is displaced by an amount of 0.5 angstrom so basically it's a asymmetric structure and that that asymmetric structure will uh, will produce a polar axis polar c axis that polar c axis is responsible for high polarization value and uh, uh, this is also bicompatible bicompatible because of the presence of zinc 
and tin atom is the zinc strand nanoparticle. So also it is easily processable. We can easily synthesize these materials by soil gel method and by solution casting. Also, it is it is very interesting because it has flexible morphologies. Like uh, it has, uh, it it can be flake like, it can be cube like, it can be rod like. So also it it has very high thermal stability, like 700 degrees centigrade. It is very much dependent because of its a cool temperature of this that material. So we, as we know that after cool temperature, the the material turns into a para electric. So it will not show any kind of Ferroelectric nature, so that's why it, uh, as it is, it has the high cooling temperature, so it can be useful for high temperature applications. Uh, this is the synthesis of zinc strand nanoparticle. This uh, we have synthesized the zinc strand nanoparticle simply by mixing the equimolar uh, solution of sodium strand and zinc acetate for stirring uh, at 60 degrees centigrade for eight hour. After uh, after completion of eight hour, we have centrifuged and washed with several or several times with the di di water ethanol. Then a uh, dried and oven 160 degrees centigrade for overnight. After preparation of uh, zinc strand nanoparticle, we have mixed the nanoparticle with PVC in THF solutions. So, which on solvent vaporization gives a flame like that. So, and uh, for the fabrication of nanogenerator, we have uh, kept the uh, piezoelectric composite in in between the two aluminum electrode. That is kind of sandwich structure. After attaching two uh, aluminum electrode, we have connected two um, copper wires for electrical measurement. So after measure, um, connection of um, copper wire and aluminum electrode, we have encapsulated the whole device with PDMS, PDMS because it uh, it is um, to make it mechanically robust so that it cannot be ruptured by any kind of mechanical stimuli. So as you can see here, the uh, composite, uh, piezoelectric composite is, uh, is bendable, rollable, stretchable, and twisting. So, so we, can, we can say that it can easily harvest energy from any kind of motions. So this is the output performance of the fabricated PNG. As you can see here, uh, this uh, output, um, we have got maximum output voltage of 40 volt and maximum output kind of 1.4 microampere. So we have measured in both uh, connections, forward and backward connection, forward and reverse connections. So uh, in uh, um, to check the, uh, to check the, <coughs> sorry, to check whether the signals are coming from the instrument or from the device, we have gone through the polarity, polarity switching test. So we have got the exactly same amount of voltage, but in opposite directions. To know the effect of nanoparticle loading on the out output voltage, we have checked, we have uh, fabricated several devices um, uh, of, uh, with, uh, with the different nanocomposite nanoparticle loading. So we have uh, achieved that at uh, 35% loading, we have got the maximum output voltage. Actually, when we are adding nanoparticles, we are adding dipoles in the nanocomposite. So on increasing the nanoparticles loading, we, the di number of dipoles in the composite increases. So because of that, we, we, uh, because of that output voltage increases, but after 35% loading, there, there will be some agglomeration of the nanoparticles. So which actually detrimental to the output performance because when you are applying force though all the nano all the nanoparticles are not facing same amount of force but when but under 35 percent loading we have got the maximum output voltage so uh, this is the output performance of the png to make it uh, um, commercially available commercial commercialized so we have uh, the um, we have rectified the output voltage uh, and under four um, four pore method, uh, four pore method. Then we uh, stored the charge in a capacitor of 2.2 microfarad, which, in, as you can see here, the capacitor charge of um, 6.7 volt is reached in 129 second. Uh, to make to to put, re check the reproducibility of the uh, charging and discharging method, we have uh, carried out the experiment for three times. We have um, seen that there is no change in the uh, uh, store in the capacitor. So to check the stepwise charging and discharging process, we have uh, we have given the figure in um, C, the, which is enlarged of the circle in figure B. So we can see, as you can see here, this is uh, as uh, our piezoelectric nanometer produces AC kind of voltage. So that's why we have uh, we have gone the stepwise and charging and discharging process. 
we have checked also output performance under various load resistance we have seen that at 20 mega ohm of resistance we have got the maximum output power of 4.08 micro watt per centimeter square so we have calculated the power by the using the formula v square by rla so uh, to check the uh, durability of the fabricated png we have uh, tested the sample um, for consecutive three weeks we have seen there no change in output performance for the three weeks also the fabricated TN png uh, is very much susceptible to harvest energy from the uh, uh, from uh, sewing machine so you can see here the sewing under sewing machine tapping so uh, we have got the 4.4 volt of uh, open circuit voltage and 283 nano ampere of current so this is uh, very much less because uh, the probe of the uh, sewing machine is very less so when the probe is uh, applying pressure so the region is very less that's why we are getting less voltage and current and uh, the, our fabricated uh, device also uh, able to harvest energy from uh, several biomechanical motions like bending, uh, heel pressing and walking. So what is happening uh, during, uh, uh, during imparting? So as you can see here, when we are pressing, so we, we have got the uh, positive signal. When we are releasing, we had got the negative signal. This is because of the fact that the electronic movement is, uh, uh, is exactly opposite in pressing and releasing condition. So if we, if we, if we uh, uh, look at the nature of peaks, so we can see that the at, uh, at position one, so we are just pushing, we are pushing the uh, piezoelectric composite. So at position two, we are the, the composite feels the maximum strain that's why we are getting that much of voltage so at position three that materials undergoes uh, releasing the pressure and at uh, point four the materials is uh, end of release of pressure so what is actually happening inside the crystal so by uh, you can see here the uh, pictorial representation the black arrows are representing the dipoles in the inside the material so when it is original condition so that di those dipoles are randomly oriented in, in the inside the crystal. So, so when we are pressing, those dipoles are getting oriented in a single direction. This is because of the fact that stress induced polarization effect. So when the material undergoes fully pressed conditions, then a maximum piezo potential are, um, are developed on the uh, respective surface. That, that and because of that, we are getting maximum voltage and current at full at fully pressed conditions. Then uh, we have in our second work, we have dealt with the different morphology of the zinc stand and zinc stannate. So uh, we here we have optimized the output performance through PN heterojunction and surface specification layer. For the synthesis of zinc stand and rod, we have, uh, we have followed, uh, um, followed a simple hydrothermal method at 170 centigrade for five hour. This is the synthesis of graphene oxide. Modified Hamas method was uh, employed for the synthesis of graphene oxide. And for the reduction of graphene oxide, we have used KIE and ACL medium. So this is the fabrication of PNG. So uh, for the fabrication of PNG, we took a copper foil and then it was immersed in the uh, ammonium par sulfate solution in a basic medium. After heating it, it will form a copper oxide layer. So after formation of copper oxide layer, we have spin coated the zinc stand and a rod on the copper oxide flex. Uh, copper oxide flex. Then after, uh, after solvent evaporation, we have spin coated a layer of PDMS RGO. So after spin, uh, spin coating, we have attached the carbon tape for elect, uh, for as an electrode. After attaching the electrode, we have attached two, uh, two uh, copper wires as uh, I have said before. So this is the um, structural morphology analysis of the zinc stand nanorod. So uh, all the XRT and FTR clearly reveals reveal that the zinc stand nanorod uh, is uh, is um, was, is formed in in the synthesis procedure. So as you can see here, the same image and same image, the zinc stand uh, nanoparticles are uh, rod like in shape. So this. To further uh, uh, prove the formation of uh, zinc stand nanorod, we have taken the uh, fringe pattern. So that is fringe distance is 0 0.28 nanometer, which is which represents the 110 crystal plane of the zinc stand nanorod. 
figure f represents the edx pattern of the zinc nanorod which clearly reveals that uh, the comp the nanoparticles contains zinc tin and oxygen atom so after fabricating the png we have got the uh, output voltage from defined devices so figure a represents the uh, without copper oxide layer and figure b represents the with copper oxide layer and but no rgo and uh, we figure c represents the uh, co co copper oxide as well as rgo so uh, from figure a to b what we can see that after inclusion of copper oxide layer it it is it gives the output voltage in enhanced amount so so uh, uh, so here we can see that a, a pn heater junction can enhance the output performance of the fabricated png so what happened actually that is zinc uh, standard nanoparticle contains a free num huge number of free electrons those free electrons actually diminishing the piezo potential so when we are using copper oxide layer that is a p type material so that p type material will uh, will uh, combine uh, combine the free electrons so to enhance the piezo potential and after attaching pdms rgo layer also we have got the uh, output voltage and output current so this is because of the fact that when we are uh, we are the material surface uh, exposed to air there will be some oxygen or defect so this or that oxygen is actually electron donating group so those electrons will in decreases the piezo potential and because of this fabrications we have got the maximum voltage of 27 volt and maximum current of 0.9 microampere also we have checked also d33 that is piezoelectric coefficient so we have seen we have seen that the piezoelectric coefficient also increasing with addition of copper oxide and uh, rgo layer so with increasing d33 the piezoelectric output performance also get enhanced in our third system we have used uh, a ferroelectric polymer as well as a ferroelectric oxide so um, uh, pvdf PV, why we have chosen pvdf if you see the backbone of pvdf you can see you, you will see that there will be ch2 and cf2 groups so depending on their arrangement on the backbone we will have some phase that is alpha phase beta phase and gamma phase so their alpha phase is non polar phase and beta phase is polar phase gamma phase is slightly polar so the pyro, the piezoelectric output performance of a png depends on the depends on the uh, amount of beta phase so our motto is to stabilize the uh, electroactive phase in pvda polymer there are several techniques to uh, to stabilize the uh, uh, beta phase of the pvdf chain so but we have chosen addition of filler will be the best choice uh, for our fabrication of nano generator so uh, that's why we have chosen zinc titanate as a nucleating agent for stabilizing the beta phase of the pvdf this is these are this is the synthesis procedure of zinc titanate so we, we have uh, followed is uh, hydrothermal method and uh, this is the fabrication of png so we have taken a definite amount of um, um, pvdf polymer and zinc titanate nanoparticles in dm solution after mixing those two solutions we have uh, spin uh, you have uh, casted on on a petri dish and after that the similar procedure as i followed in the uh, on the in the previous slides so for identification of the crystalline phase of pvdf we have done the like xrd and ftir so we have seen that when in that is pure pvdf there all the peaks are responsible for alpha phase but on increasing the amount of jet jet to so we have seen that their electroactive gamma phase or is uh, is growing so at the loading of 28% jet to pvdf there is no alpha phase so this can also be proved from the ftr spectra of the composite so these here in ftr spectra the peak at 834 and 1234 cm inverse is indicate the formation of gamma phase in the pvdf jet to nano composite so this is the piezoelectric output performance as i said before so after uh, fabricating uh, the piezoelectric generator we have got the maximum output voltage of 25.7 volt and maximum output current of 1.2 microampere which is 12 times higher than the pure pvdf so so compared to other previous two reports we have found that only at less amount of jet loading we have got that amount of voltage and current 
So in our uh, in a, in our fourth system, we have seen that we have uh, we have taken two uh, two ferroelectric material on its or organic inorganic perovskite, another is ferroelectric polymer. So here uh, we have chosen a uh, chosen a in situ process for the formation of you know, organic inorganic perovskite. First, we have taken a definite amount of PVDF in DMSO solvent. After that, we have mixed two precursor of the formamide, um, formamide bromium and formidium bromium and bromium bromide and lead bromide. After mixing two uh, PVDF and uh, this solution, we have uh, we have poured on on the petri dish, which on so, uh, which on uh, lyophilizing means freeze drying process gave, gave the porous uh, aerogel film. So that porous aerogel film, after getting the porous aerogel film, we have attached two aluminum electrode for electrical connections. These are the same image of the um, aerogel film. So as you can see here, the uh, the film has, is completely porous. So this also be um, proved from the TAME image where all the formamide nanoparticles are equally distributed through the matrix. The formation of uh, formidium lead bromide can also be proved by the fringe pattern in the PV, um, in the polymer nanocomposite. We have seen that the 3.0 Amstrom is representing the 2G0 plane of the formamide nanoparticles. The formation of gamma phase also can be uh, can be approved from the uh, FTR and XRD analysis. So this is this is the output performance of the um, of the fabricated PNG. As you can see here, the output performance is highest at 88 percent loading. So after that, we have uh, checked the output performance at various frequency. As you know that the human motions or any kind of biomechanical, biomechanical motions are irregular in nature. So that's uh, that's why we have to check the output performance uh, of the PNG at various frequency. We have got the output performance of, of the PNG at four hertz uh, of frequency. So um, as you can, uh, you, you, you have you, you have seen in previous slides, we are our fabricated nanocomposite aerosol kind of structure. So we have to uh, we have to consider its durability. So after uh, after performing uh, for consecutive four weeks, there is no decrement in the output performance. So this fabricated uh, PNG uh, gave the output voltage of 26.2 volt and 2.1 microampere current. So another interesting features of feature of the uh, fabricated device is it acts as a photo detector. So uh, for the fabrication of photo detector, we have taken a paid uh, ITO glass. Then after uh, etching, uh, after forming a depletion layer, we have spin coated the PVM, PVDF and formidium lead bromide uh, composite. After spin coating, and uh, it was dried in the oven. For, and after that, we have measured the current and voltage of the uh, photo detector. So we have seen that on, with increasing the um, intensity of the light, the voltage and current increases. Also, this is ohmic in nature. Then we have checked the uh, 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 then we have checked the uh, intense uh, photo current and responsivity on uh, with incident power. So. Figure D represents the uh, reproducibility of the uh, of the PNG under uh, under 10 volt uh, 10 volt of, of uh, 10 volt application of 10 volt, and figure E represents the uh, the enlarged uh, enlarged view of, of a single peak. As you can see here, the uh, time rise time and fall time is very less, so it will quickly uh, detect the uh, UV, uh, UV light. So what is the connection between our fabricated energy and UV, uh, and light? So we have seen that the paramedium lead bromide is semi semi um, semiconductor. So when we are uh, irritating, then, then we have seen that there will be some uh, exciton generation. So that exciton will be uh, will reduce the uh, piezo potential of the PVDF. So when we are measuring, then we have got the less vol less voltage on uh, on application of light. So that uh, that reduce reduction actually the amount of 38 weight percent. So uh, which clearly reveals that so this easily detect any uh, detect the uh, light uh, through the piezoelectric effect. 
this uh, so it can be useful as a photo detector and in our next work we have used uh, we have fabricated a tng triboelectric nanogenerator then uh, we have implemented two types of uh, friction layer one is cigar draper and another is electroactive polymer so cigar draper is waste material and here polymer uh, pvdf is in, was used as a another active material so here we uh, we have uh, followed a non-solvent induced phase separation method for the for the formation of PVDF sponge. So, so uh, in the experimental part, we have taken a PVDF solution in a syringe and then spread over a water surface. After that, as water and DMF uh, are non-solvent, so um, uh, so PV polymer sponge will be formed. So after taking the polymer sponge, then we have cut in a definite size for fabricating the nanogenerator. We have seen that the weight or total weight of the two components is around, was around 0 0.716 gram and total weight of device was around 1.259 gram. So it is very light in weight, but it is very, uh, very susceptible to uh, give the output performance to harvest the electrical energy from several kind of biomechanical motions. So this is the morphological elemental analysis of the PVDF sponge. As you can see here, so PVDF uh, sponge uh, contains several kinds of microstructure, so several kind of fibers. So this this is also effective for fabricating high performance TNG. As TNG con TNG involves um, the friction of the two surface, so surface sharpness is, plays an important place and important role in the in the out in the uh, um, efficient in the fabrication of efficient TNG. So uh, also you can see here the cigarette foil contains some cubic type of nanostructure. So this also enhances the contact surface of the friction layer. So because of this combination, we have got the output voltage, maximum output voltage. Uh, to know the electroactive phase detection, we have, characterized, we have characterized, characterized the PVDF and nanocomposite through XRT and FTR. Also, we have characterized the DSC analysis. So we have this, and we have seen that the thermo, thermodynamically stable phase, alpha phase is formed from the thin film. But of the PVDF sponge, we have seen that the melting point in, in the range of 165 to 172. So we, we are very much sure about that the non-solvent induced space separation method produced a beta phase of PVDF. After fabricating the device, we have checked the output performance of the nanogenerator. So um, we have compared also the output performance with the solution casted film. We have seen that the uh, solution casted film only produces 80 volt, whereas the sponge-like film produce, produces 342 volt. So that means huge increment when we are having the sponge-like structure. So in it is also uh, uh, proved from the current measurement, as you can see here, 8.1 microampere current op was obtained from the sponge-like flame. So whereas 1.1 microampere current was, from, from, was obtained from the solution casted flame. So our fabricated device also um, able to harvest energy from several kind of mechanical motions. When we are uh, we are um, for, uh, we, are, we, we just coin, on coin falling from the height of 10 centimeter, it produces around nine volt of uh, um, open circuit voltage. Then on also we have checked the output performance under potato falling. So um, we have checked the output performance under of several potatoes of several weight. So we, with increasing with increasing the weight of the uh, potatoes, we have seen that the output voltage of the TNG increases. And there are several kind this kind this these are the uh, several experiment as I said before. So here also here we, I can say that one. one capacitor with capacitance of 22 microfarad can be charged up to 5.1 volt in just a uh, to around 250 seconds. So we can easily harvest the energy from mechanical motions as well as we can store in the capacitor in a very short time span. So this is the working principle of the TNG based on capacitor structure. So when those PM cigarette foil and PVDF are coming closer and touched together then cigarette foil eject electrons as it is it as it contains the aluminum 
so and the pvd con uh, pvd accept electrons from the aluminum surface after accepting and releasing electrons that uh, when they are getting separated those to neutralize those charges the electron movements occurs from one electrode to another electrode and because uh, how and this is how the tng works these are the practical implementation of the nano generators so we can harvest from energy from various mechanical motions also we can run the several electronic gadgets like lcd screen wristwatch and hygrometer also we can propose a a, a um, uh, detection system where we can um, in hospital or the veteran people usually fall so to uh, to act as a sensor we have uh, we have formulated a 12 pairs of wire there is fall detection array of the tngs from through the data acquisition and data analysis we can detect easily where um, where and any kind of any any person fall from the bed or not so this is the recent utilization this is in denmark so uh, uh, we, uh, we have seen that there are 20 floats of 10 meter of diameter so each power station produces 6 megawatt of energy and uh, this megawatt of energy actually um, consumed by 4000 4, homes and just capturing 0.1% of ocean kinetic energy this is very much emerging field nowadays so, and this is the diversity of our uh, piezoelectricity and triboelectricity. As you can see here in the first figure, you, uh, you can see, so there are self power energy system. That is, we, we, have, uh, uh, we have just uh, used as a separator, as a piezoelectric separator, which actually uh, tuning, um, uh, governing the electron uh, ionic movement in the supercapacitor. In the second figure, we have seen that that piezoelectricity um, enhances the catalysis of uh, some several um, organic pollutants. So when it is piezocatalysis, then the piezoelectric potential will work. But when it is piezophotocatalysis, then uh, piezo and photo, photo, um, photon will work together. So what happened in piezophotocatalysis? That is when photon um, irradiate on the surface, on the materials, then there will be some electron hole separation that electron hole separation has a less lifetime so to stabilize that electron hole separation we have applied that piezo potential that piezo potential will stabilize the electron and hole and another exciting example is the um, antibacterial activity so basically in, when piezo piezo photocatalysis involves the production of ros so this ros reactive oxygen pieces will uh, will uh, create a pressure on the cell cell wall and because of this oxidative stress, the cell will be damaged. This is another kind of exciting topic in our field. Another example of triboelectric nano generator is uh, um, for the um, for electrolysis of water. So it will produce hydrogen and oxygen from the fuel cell. So if uh, triboelectric nano generator uh, nowadays very much effective for hydrogen and oxygen production, which will be act as a fuel cell. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Baria, for uh, such a wonderful, very interesting topic. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, one question from Dr. Narayanan, that can we tune a non-piezoelectric material to behave as piezoelectric? Yeah, there, are, yeah, there is an example of uh, zinc oxide, which is not piezoelectric material, but it uh, it acts as a piezoelectric material um, uh, for energy harvesting. That is first, uh, actually, Zhongling Wang was invented that when he was applying any force on zinc oxide nanowire, then it, it was able to produce a electric pulse. Okay, okay. And uh, Dr. Paria, one more question, that um, triboelectric nanogenerator, how it is superior uh, or how it is defined from a piezoelectric generator at low frequency? Sorry? How a triboelectric gen nano generator is defined from a piezoelectric generator at low frequency? Yeah, that is actually uh, piezoelectric material uh, contains some polymer and composite. Actually, inorganic materials are very brittle. So you have to, you have to use the polymer matrix. So that when you are pressing, so the some amount of force is absorbed by the polymer so but in case of triboelectric material as it is uh, it is surface phenomena 
so when it is touching so only uh, a simple touch will uh, will uh, will transfer the electron from uh, one surface to another surface that's why at low frequency it will work as well as with high frequency okay uh, one last question from dr brijesh shukla how uh, like metal oxide how it behave for this kind of application Piezoelectric application for piezoelectric application. Can you use any kind of metal oxide? And if it is, if yes, how we can apply it? No, I have used the zinc zinc standard metal oxide. Zinc standard. That is also one kind of metal oxide. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Doctor Padia, for your uh, such a wonderful and uh, very uh, defined but very exciting topic. And I hope that in future we can invite you. As a in offline mode, and uh, we can keep uh, doing collaborative work. Thank you very much. So now we have a our next uh, our next speaker. Would like to welcome Dr. Lo Vicio Carmelo. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, before uh, he start his presentation, let me introduce Dr. Carmelo. Car Dr. Carmelo is a researcher at National Council of Research Institute of Advanced Energy Technologies in uh, Messina, uh, Italy, and uh, he did his PhD. He obtained his PhD in uh, uh, 2009 and in chemical sciences. And his experience is based on preparation and physical chemical and electrochemical characterization of materials and components for energy conversion and storage. Particularly, he, research is focused on the synthesis of non-precious metal electrocatalyst for direct methanol fuel cell application, mainly at the cathode site. So over to you, Dr. Carmelo. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me and uh, see the screen? Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, many thanks to the organizing committee for inviting me to talk about the results of my research, uh, particularly obtained with the direct methanol fuel cell. Uh, I will talk about the performance, methanol tolerance, and durability of non-platinum cathode catalyst. Uh, in general, a fuel cell is an electrochemical generator able to convert directly and continuously the chemical energy of the fuel into electrical energy. The reducing agent, the fuel, and the oxidant oxygen uh, uh, that uh, should be contained uh, can, uh, could be contained also in the air not uh, with uh, uh, with the pump uh, react at the electrodes with the electrochemical oxidation of the fuel uh, reduction of the oxidant production of water and heat release at a different temperature according to the, to the type of the fuel cells. Uh, fuel cells can be divided in uh, proton exchange uh, membrane, uh, alkaline uh, fuel cells, direct methanol, phosphoric acid, molten carbonate, uh, solid oxide fuel cells. Uh, they differ uh, mainly on operating temperature, low temperature or high temperature, e on the fuel, natural gas, hydrogen, or liquid fuel like methanol, ethanol, and mainly in the electrolyte, proton exchange membrane, or phosphoric acid, molten carbonate, solid oxide, and so on. A relevant aspect of uh, fuel cells are that uh, uh, the, these fuel cells allow the decentralized production of uh, heat and electricity with high efficiency. They do not emit uh, fine particles or uh, nitrogen oxides or sulfur oxides. Uh, they contribute uh, also to reduce significantly greenhouse gas emissions 
and they can be supplied by natural gas, hydrogen, and fuel cells, and, uh, and biofuels, sorry. Uh, for the fuel cell advantage, uh, we have uh, a high conversion efficiency, so the use of any fuel from uh, hydrocarbon to hydrogen, also obtainable with uh, renewable sources such as uh, sun, wind. Uh, the system uh, requires a very low use of pumps, blowers, so uh, considerably reducing the maintenance. They uh, have low environmental impact with the possibility to become new if the fuel cell is directly fed with hydrogen. And another advantage is the modularity of the system, which allows the same performance, uh, both in larger, in large power station and in small portable systems. The drawbacks of this fuel cell are the high cost of the components, mainly due to the small market, and uh, further optimization of this system is still necessary in order to achieve durability and the reliability required by the market. Uh, there are uh, many fuels uh, that could be used in fuel cells, such as uh, gasoline and diesel from fossil fuels, natural gas, uh, methanol and ethanol derived from coal and biomass uh, for direct alcohol fuel cell application, and the green hydrogen provided by renewable sources. The oxygen reduction reaction is one of the most important uh, reactions in devices like fuel cells and batteries. And uh, the oxygen reduction reaction generally proceeds uh, or uh, in a direct pathway involving uh, four electrons uh, from oxygen uh, directly to water, or uh, by an indirect pathway involving two electron reduction uh, with the formation of hydrogen peroxide and further two electron reduction with the formation of water. Uh, direct methanol fuel cell are a subcategory sub of proton exchange membrane fuel cell. Uh, they are appropriate for portable power applications such as uh, consumer electronics, where the power requirements are low and a simple compact system with high energy density is required. Uh, at the anode, methanol oxidation reaction occurs. Uh, whereas at the cathode, the oxygen reduction reaction gives the formation of water. The electrocatalysis of oxygen reduction reaction is one of the limiting steps due to the slow kinetics. Uh, this requires the use of expensive platinum-based catalyst characterized by suitable activity. Moreover, one of the main drawbacks in uh, DMFC is the methanol crossover from the anode to the cathode side through the membrane that results in a mixed potential at the cathode. Uh, methanol permeation uh, produces this mixed potential and reduces the overall efficiency of direct methanol fuel cell. To use platinum free catalyst with better methanol tolerance and proper activity are considered in this talk. So, direct methanol fuel cell represent uh, a promising technology for the spontaneous electrochemical conversion of the chemical energy into electrical energy, even by the virtue of its uh, scalability in uh, stack. The stack consists of individual fuel cells connected in series and formed by bipolar plate, uh, gas liquid channels, membrane electrode assembly uh, that uh, represents the core of the stack, and end plates. 
a high energy density of uh, pure methanol, 6.1 kilowatt hour per kilogram, attracted interest of portable electronic market as well as uh, auxiliary power unit for uh, telecommunication. The factors uh, um, contrasting uh, the, a large scale commercialization concerns sluggish kinetics uh, of the electrochemical reactions and the consequent high cost more than 50% derived from the use of noble metal catalyst. Uh, furthermore, direct methanol fuel cell systems able to work with high fuel concentration would mean a significant step forward towards high capacity uh, electrical system. Unfortunately, the higher the alcohol concentration, the worse the influence of permeated methanol on performance due to the crossover effect. <coughs> so the aim of this work is, uh, the, this work is divided in three parts. In the first part, uh, uh, we talk about the preparation of methanol tolerant palladium based cathode catalyst. In the second part, we talk about the metal nitrogen carbon catalyst based on low cost precursors. The metal in this case is or cobalt or iron, and it treated at two different temperatures uh, 800 degrees centigrade or 1000 degrees centigrade. In this case, we called this uh, catalyst uh, cobalt NC8, NC10, Fe NC8, and Fe NC10. But the numbers are referred to, heat, to the heat treatment and not to a stoichiometric uh, of uh, the carbon. In the third part, we uh, talk about the results obtained with the commercial Fe NC. In, co in cooperation with the Parito powder. Uh, all the catalysts are, uh, were investigated, uh, were physicochemical investigated, uh, with TEM, XPS, XRD, and uh, electrochemical analyzed in rotating disk electrode to investigate uh, the catalytic activity and the tolerance to methanol and the performance was assessed in direct methanol fuel cell. Next generation cathode catalyst for direct methanol fuel cells must have high catalytic activity for the oxygen reduction reaction, a lower cost than benchmark platinum catalyst, high stability and high tolerance to permeated methanol use a complete replacement of platinum-based catalyst characterized by low methanol tolerance was first explored by our group with palladium electrocatalyst and palladium cobalt alloys. <coughs> Sorry. 30% uh, palladium and palladium cobalt alloy supported on a carbon is uh, cash and black in this case, were prepared using the sulfite complex route. An appropriate uh, amount of cash and black was uh, ultrasonically dispersed in water and then mixed with uh, uh, the uh, palladium sulfite acidic solution. Subsequently, uh, hydrogen peroxide was added to decompose the sulfite complex with the formation of a colloidal suspension that is palladium oxide on cash and black. Hence, the suspension was uh, filtered uh, and uh, copiously washed uh, with water and dried. A portion of the obtained powder was carbotelmally reduced at 500 degrees to form palladium on cash and black whereas the other portion was ultrasonically dispersed in water and mixed with cobalt uh, nitrate solutions, solution. The product was impregnated and dried. 
So the obtained powder was divided and carbothermally reduced at 500 degrees to obtain palladium 10 cobalt 1 and at 600 degrees centigrade to obtain palladium 4 cobalt 1 after a leaching uh, in perchloric acid solution uh, to remove possible traces of cobalt in the surface of the electrocatalyst. The figure on the left compares the XRD pattern of uh, palladium and palladium alloy catalyst after leaching and the commercial platinum on carbon catalyst. Uh, it can be seen that all the electrocatalysts show the typical uh, phase centered keyback structure of palladium and platinum. Regarding the 30% palladium 4 cobalt 1, uh, the peaks appear to be shifted to higher flex angle in comparison with other catalysts. This effect is due to the highest temperature of reduction that determines a penetration of cobalt metal in the crystalline structure of palladium catalyst. By using the same amount of cobalt precursor, but with a minor temperature of reduction, 500 degrees, this effect is not shown for palladium cobalt alloy. Only a small amount of cobalt is inside the structure of palladium, and after leaching, a reduced amount of palladium cobalt ratio uh, is obtained. The commercial platinum carbon showed uh, the smallest crystallized size, uh, 2.8 nanometers. The figures on the right show TEM analysis for palladium-based electrocatalyst with the mean particle size similar to the crystallized size determined by XRD analysis. Uh, the micrographs showed a suitable particle dispersion on the support for all the cathode catalysts uh, with the slightly larger particles for palladium 4 cobalt 1 due to the larger temperature of reduction. Uh, after physical chemical analysis, we can discuss the electrochemical results. The rotating disk electrode measurements of the catalyst were performed at room temperature using a conventional three electrode cell. The working electrode was a glassy carbon disk of five millimeters where the thin film catalyst was deposited. The catalytic inks were prepared by sonicating each catalyst in isopropyl alcohol and 15% of nafion ionomer and then added onto a GC disc um, to obtain a 50 microgram per square centimeter uh, uh, catalyst loading. The base electrolyte was uh, a deaerated 0.1 molar per chloric acid solution in which methanol was gradually added to investigate the tolerance of the catalyst to the poisoning caused by this organic fuel at the cathode side. These uh, figures show the OR uh, curves obtained in uh, oxygen saturated perchloric acid without methanol and with 0.1 molar methanol solution. The methanol addition causes a shift of the ORR onset towards more negative potential values and a decrease of current. This is due to the mixed potential caused by the simultaneous oxygen reduction and methanol oxidation at the working electrode interface. This effect is more remarkable in the commercial 30% platinum on carbon, um, showing an evident methanol oxidation peak during the experiment. Platinum on carbon is the more active electrocatalyst in the Bayer electrolyte, but in the presence of 0.1 molar methanol solution, palladium on cashew black has the most active. Uh, at the most positive onset potential 
and reaches the largest uh, limiting current density compared to that obtained with the platinum on carbon. These results show the better tolerance to low methanol poisoning of palladium-based catalyst compared to a benchmark platinum catalyst. Uh, for the, <coughs> the fuel cell measurements, um, the fuel cell measurements uh, were carried out by comparing the prepared palladium-based catalyst with the benchmark platinum carbon used as, um, as cathode catalyst of four different membrane electrode assembly. Uh, platinum ruthenium carbon was used as anode catalyst in all the fuel cells, and uh, MEAs were obtained by hot pressing method uh, between electrodes and nafion membrane. Different methanol concentration uh, solution were fed at the anode, whereas oxygen was fed at the cathode. The performance uh, of each MEA was measured at uh, 60 and 90 degrees. In this case, we report uh, just uh, the measurement at 60 degrees centigrade. Uh, at high current density, uh, the performance increases passing from one to two molar uh, methanol concentrations for all the tested cathode catalyst uh, based uh, MEA. The maximum power density for palladium and palladium 10 cobalt, uh, palladium 10 cobalt 1 shows an increase in performance even with five molar methanol, and there is only a slight decrease at 10 molar. On the other hand, the MEA based on platinum cathode uh, achieves a power density of 65 milliwatt per square centimeter feeding 2 molar methanol, whereas at 10 molar uh, the performance decreases to um, 25 milliwatt per square centimeter. So the high methanol tolerance properties of palladium and palladium alloy based electrocatalyst as evidenced in the half cell characterization are also demonstrated in direct methanol fuel cell. The advantage of using a high methanol concentration in direct methanol fuel cells is related to a higher energy density. On the other side, the methanol crossover reduces the overall efficiency. Uh, the high methanol uh, tolerance properties of palladium and cash and black is also demonstrated by these variations of open circuit potential values. In a direct methanol fuel cell, the open circuit potential is an important parameter to assess the methanol tolerance effect. The cell based on uh, palladium and palladium cobalt alloys shows the higher open circuit potential than the reference cell that shows a significant degrees, decrease as the methanol uh, concentration increases. This result is a clear indication of the, the tolerance toward the methanol crossover of the palladium based catalyst. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the, the two uh, figures are overlap, but uh, durability is another important issue that needs to be addressed in order to achieve a large scale commercialization of direct methanol fuel cells. The mechanism causing a decrease of the catalyst performance are summarized in into these points, dissolution of metal ions from small particles into the membrane or redeposition onto larger particles uh, or corrosion of carbon support with the loss of electronic contact or particle coalescence. Uh, here the degradation test at 0.3 volt in five molar methanol feeding showed that including a 
small amount of cobalt in the structure of palladium, like in palladium 10, cobalt 1, is beneficial for the durability. In the second part, uh, we treat uh, the argument of non precious metal catalyst because. Uh, also the palladium catalysts are uh, expensive. So because of the cost, uh, direct methanol fuel cell technologies require the development of non precious metal catalyst characterized by efficient activity and selectivity towards uh, oxygen reduction reaction. A synthetic procedure for uh, metal nitrogen carbon catalyst uh, generally uh, involves the mixing of uh, metal, nitrogen precursor, and a carbon sources. The nitrogen precursor is generally inside the structure of some polymers, uh, like uh, aromatic heterocycle molecules, amides or amides, uh, containing double or triple bonds. The carbon source can be included in the nitrogen molecule or not. And after mixing the precursor, a high temperature treatment is necessary in order to obtain the catalytic sites uh, like uh, M metal N4, metal N2, C2, uh, that are able to perform the oxygen reduction reaction with the suitable kinetics. The main differences uh, among the various preparations rely on the nitrogen precursors uh, used on the heat treatments, one or more than one, and the use of templates like uh, uh, silica. Uh, here we, we can see an in-house uh, metal nitrogen carbon catalyst. The, Cobalt EDTA and iron EDTA complexes were prepared by mixing the EDTA solution with the cobalt U plus or iron 3 plus precursors. The color became pink for cobalt EDTA and soft yellow for iron EDTA when a stoichiometric amount was added to the solution. Finally, an oxidized carbon uh, that is a cation black treated in nitric acid was mixed to the sol gels. Uh, the solvents were evaporated and the impregnated product was dried. The obtained powder uh, was carbothermally treated at 800 degrees or 1000 degrees with the formation of cobalt NC8, cobalt NC10, Fe NC8, and Fe NC10. The figures compare the UV visible spectra of cobalt EDTA and iron EDTA complexes. Uh, for comparison, the spectra of cobalt U, iron 3, and EDTA were acquired at the same experimental conditions. To the left, it can be seen that EDTA does not absorb the visible light of the chelated species, the, the, the visible light. Uh, whereas cobalt U has two main peaks. In the case of uh, cobalt EDTA, uh, the two peaks shift towards uh, lower wavelengths. That means the metal is completely chelated with the EDTA agent, as reported in the, in the literature. Also, in this case, uh, hypsochromic and hypochromic effects are also shown uh, to the iron EDTA formation. These effects depend on the presence of functional groups close to chromophore that decrease the electronic delocalization. For the time analysis, there are a portion of space visible at low magnification in which the particles are more agglomerated. As expected, the higher the temperature, the larger the agglomeration. 
among uh, FENC and Cobalt NC catalyst, the Cobalt NC8 displays the lowest average uh, particle size due to a best distribution uh, of cobalt in the sol gel reported in the procedure of synthesis. At uh, high magnification, uh, the particles are grouped in nanoclusters characterized by a mean particle size ranging from 0.2 to 0.5 nanometers. This means they are just composed by atoms or groups of them. In this table, we can see that the most percentage is represented by carbon substrate, whereas metal and nitrogen are between uh, one and three percent. Uh, the catalysts treated at lower temperature uh, have the, the, the largest percentage of nitrogen in this case. From the convolution of uh, XPS, mm, the signal of uh, N1S could be divided in uh, five groups, pyridinic, pyrolic, uh, graphitic N, or the interaction with, uh, with the metal, or nitrogen oxides. By comparing the results, the amount of pyridinic and species uh, for uh, the cobalt NC8 and FENC8 catalyst is higher than the other derived catalyst, whereas the content of, uh, the content of uh, pyrolic uh, N species increases with the catalyst treated at higher temperature. It is uh, thought that uh, pyrrolic N contributes to a major production of hydrogen peroxide in the ORR process and to a decrease of the overall activity, even if the stability of py pyridinic uh, N species is compromised by the protonation of carbon nitrogen sites in uh, acidic environments. Uh, one of the most important data reported uh, here <coughs> is the strong interaction between nitrogen and iron atoms, probably due to the higher formation constant of the complex compared to cobalt EDTA formation. FENC8 exhibits also the smallest amount of pyrrolic nitrogen species. Furthermore, uh, this figure shows uh, the behavior of the different metal nitrogen carbon compounds towards the carbon 1S composition. It results that the FENC8 has a smaller relative amount of graphitic carbon and the largest number of carbon nitrogen defects. These uh, figures show the oxygen reduction reaction curves obtained in oxygen saturated perchloric acid without methanol and with four different methanol concentrations. To use each catalyst is characterized by five curves. These results highlight the excellent methanol tolerance of such compounds pointing out the, prom the promising characteristics in order to be used in direct methanol fuel cell. In the base electrolyte with 0.1 molar methanol concentration, the commercial 30% platinum on carbon catalyst show an evident methanol oxidation peak during the experiment. To use in this condition, FENC8 show uh, is the most uh, uh, active uh, uh, catalyst uh, because uh, it shows the onset and uh, half way potential uh, larger than platinum or carbon. For direct methanol fuel cell polarization and power density curves uh, for the various MEAs equipped at the cathode with the synthesized metal uh, nitrogen carbon catalyst, 
the most performing MEA is the one based on the uh, iron nitrogen carbon eight uh, treated at 800 degrees centigrade with the 10 milliwatt per square centimeter maximum power density. Certainly there are other work uh, where uh, uh, higher performance are reported. However, this deal with the catalyst prepared by using complex prepar preparation pros procedures, the use of templates and their removal with aggressive reactants or high cost precursors. Uh, taking into account all of these discussed aspects, the um, previous group metal free catalyst appear as a very promising formulation for cost-effective direct methanol fuel cell systems, in which platinum and all the previous group metal catalysts can be completely removed from the cathode, and the low-loading platinum-rutinium catalyst may be employed uh, at the anode. This is summarized here. Uh, where the maximum power density is represented against the platinum content in the MEA, considering that uh, it is only present at the anode as a platinum rutinium catalyst. Performances larger than 60 watt per gram of platinum can be reached even with the high methanol concentration of 10 mol, thanks to their extraordinary tolerance to methanol. This means that it is preferred to employ the most expensive metal platinum only at the anode in order to take advantage of the methanol tolerant properties of MNC catalyst at the cathode and to design system with prolonged operation in high methanol concentration. In the third and final part, we <coughs> We'll talk uh, uh, about the commercial FNC in cooperation with uh, uh, Pajarito powder. Uh, here, the nitrogen precursor, precursor is uh, different from EDTA. Now we have a pimematic and precursor. Uh, and after mixing them with iron precursor and after heat treatment at 900 degrees centigrade, we obtained a, uh, this structure characterized by double conjugated bonds uh, for the electronic conductivity. This uh, synthesis uh, were, mm, was done with the silica template and, they, and uh, its removal after the heat treatment. And we have also the formation of many active sites, such as Fe and CN4 and Fe and 2 uh, c 2 The effect of the different nafion percentages uh, on the power density obtained by the direct methanol fuel cell equipped with Fe and C uh, with the catalyst loading of 6 milligram per square centimeter at the cathode is reported in the figures on the left. A volcano-shaped trend is envisaged with a maximum uh, obtained at 45% uh, nafion ionomer loading. As uh, clearly observed, the uh, open circuit potential is not influenced by the nafion loading, showing similar values with different contents. The most important aspect derived from these graphs is related to the high and very similar to each other um, values of open circuit potential recorded under the different conditions of temperature and methanol concentration. Uh, confirming uh, one more time the methanol tolerance characteristics uh, of this catalyst. Uh, the maximum power density values normalized against the um, platinum content in the MEA, uh, only present at the anode side in the platinum-rutinium alloys used as catalyst, 
were compared with the current literature regarding this type of catalyst in direct methanol fuel cell applications. Different methanol concentration, one, two, five, and 10 uh, molar, were analyzed in this comparison. As observed, were um, analyzed, but in 2019. So, <clears throat> As observed, the present catalyst shows the highest uh, performance until now reached with the known PGM catalyst in direct methanol fuel cells, both at 60 degrees centigrade and 90 degrees centigrade. In particular, at this latter temperature, the normalized maximum power density was ranging between 95 and 110 watt per uh, gram of platinum, significantly higher compared to previous catalysts, also prepared by using the same methodology, but employing uh, uh, different precursors. Durability tests were carried out on fresh MEA with uh, FN, in the commercial efficiency catalyst. <clears throat> they consisted of potentiostatic uh, chronoamperometric test uh, at 0.3 volt, keeping the cell temperature at 90 degrees centigrade and feeding 5 molar methanol in direct methanol fuel cell configuration. The variation of performance with time of an MEA in a direct fed, mm, alcohol fuel cells relies uh, on several factors, including cathode, anode, and membrane degradation phenomena. In direct methanol fuel cell, the current density shows initially a rapid uh, decrease of uh, performance with a loss of uh, uh, the power density, and uh, then the degradation is decelerated. In uh, conclusion, in the first part, uh, we talk about palladium and palladium cobalt that were prepa prepared and characterized demonstrating excellent methanol tolerance for oxygen reduction reaction. They can substitute uh, platinum at the cathode with um, working with high methanol concentration. The palladium-10 cobalt-1 shows good behavior for durability test. In the second part, a template-free preparation of cobalt-NC and FENC have been obtained by chelating the metal with the DTA and supporting on oxidized carbon. Different thermal treatments have been carried out and uh, the performance was evaluated in ox the activity in oxygen reduction reaction on, uh, in uh, rotating disk electrode uh, test and uh, uh, with the direct methanol fuel cell at the cathode of uh, this cell. The FENC is confirmed to be the most performing catalyst, and this has been attributed to a larger amount of nitrogen, a larger ratio of py pyridinic pyrrolic species, and to a better iron nitrogen interaction. In the third part, we, uh, we can see uh, we talk about uh, uh, commercial FENC prepared by silica template. And this shows the highest power density until now never reached with this catalyst family. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And uh, if you have uh, some question, <clears throat> I'm available. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Carmelo, for such a nice and uh, wonderful no. presentation. It's a very important topic that uh, DMFC, uh, as far as renewable fuel is concerned, uh, I have one question, uh, sir. Uh, methanol is used here as a substrate for anode for fuel. The, what will be the probable cost for uh, methanol? Because methanol production, it is, bit it is a bit costly. So if, you, if uh, this needs to be commercialized, 
DMFC as a stack. How, what do you think that uh, methanol based uh, uh, fuel cell is good or alkaline based fuel cell or PMFC will be a better choice? Uh, yes, in, in this case, uh, uh, we used methanol uh, or, uh, in other alkaline fuel cell, we can use uh, ethanol uh, that is uh, more, uh, less toxic than methanol. Uh, this uh, alcohol can be used uh, thanks to the biomass. So, uh, it uh, cannot create uh, an environmental pollutant in the air so, uh, because there is uh, a cycle. So for the environmental problem, uh, the use of methanol is not a problem. Uh, in uh, in the, the fuel cell are very versatile as... Uh, uh, as a technology, so you can use uh, you can use one technique for stationary application, another uh, another technique like direct alcohol fuel cell for uh, uh, for uh, power application with uh, with portatile with a, a, a for a laptop for the phone. Uh, so this, uh, uh, I suggest all the technique because they have uh, they they have many uses. They have many uses for their versatility. Uh, I don't know if I understand well the question. Uh, yes, sir, you, you gave uh, the proper answer uh, that uh, we can derive uh, methanol or uh, rather than less toxic ethanol from the biomass as a substrate. So thank you, sir. And one more question from Dr. S. Ganam. Uh, how can we measure theoretically probe width and probe volume other than the BET analysis? Uh... How we can measure theoretically uh, pore width uh, and pore volume. And pore volume. Um, yeah, generally we use uh, bet analysis to uh, mm, to measure uh, the the, por the porosity of this uh, catalyst. Uh, but uh, it depends on uh, the instrumentation that we we have in uh, in our lab. So. Uh, the, poros the porosity in our lab is uh, always uh, uh, measured by um, BAT, BAT technique. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, such a wonderful uh, presentation. And due to time constant, uh, we cannot uh, stretch it more. And I hope that uh, during, uh, after this pandemic, we can uh, invite you in uh, during offline conference uh, thank you very much once again Dr. thank you you thank you very much to the organize uh, <laughs> our next speaker is dr jogesh kumar before i before i start uh, i would like to introduce dr jogesh kumar sir is online he's online I think sir is online. Uh, yes. Dr. Uh, Yogesh, Yogesh sir. Yogesh sir uh, is there, I think. I'm seeing I him, but... I, I'm, I requested him to unmute. Yogesh sir, are you there? Because he is there. I can see that he is there. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Hello? I'm making his uh, making him co-host also. Yes. Oh. Dr. Kumar. 
let me introduce dr jogesh kumar it's a pleasure to introduce dr uh, jogesh kumar he is uh, currently working in arsd college university of delhi which is basically a public funded government university he is working on energy research and material is he worked in nissan renault battery material related project he has visited bark mumbai under the science academic fellowship he worked as a postdoctoral fellow in a european union project in poznan uh, university of technology poland he has been selected for an international scientist position in a national university of science and technology moscow russia and has published more than 40 high impact factor research paper with almost 300 plus citation his h index is 24 so far he has spoken in several in international conference and his research area is basically in ionic liquid activated carbon production and characterization of super capacitor and batteries uh, density functional theory and md calculation and polymer electrolytes so over to you dr jogesh kumar i request you to start your presentation thank you very much dr somya it is a, a great pleasure for me to uh, be with you in this uh, fdp the faculty development program uh, uh throughout this uh, you know fdp i feel that um, the level of presentations was very good and the excellent one uh, the presentation that is in, that includes uh many many big names of the material science i thanks to the organizers for inviting me for a presentation of my work dr minal gupta who invited me for this fdp uh, thank you so much ma'am and i thanks you for this nice thank you sir thank you for being here thanks and his and uh, her team and department of physics of sharda university and all fa faculty members they are working there yes. and I, it is a time to uh, you know now the realization of technological importance in in this area so Uh, let me start that uh, um, my presentation that is about the i have only 25 slides i modified my presentation according to the time slot given to me it is 30 30 minutes so i would i would be finish within the stipulated time so i will talk about the super capacitors maybe you have heard from the previous um, speakers they talked about energy storage devices energy generation harvesting devices so same here so the materials are the same the the game of the materials and uh, we all material scientists play with the materials and uh, we need the energy storage if any kind of energy generation is going on um, in many many ways so you see that you need to store that energy to utilize the, that energy on demand or uh, you can utilize this energy with the real time scale no problem but on demand later on you can if you want to use it then you need to store it so storage storage is a area where the people are working with the generation uh so you see that uh, the capacitors of the three are you able to see my screen sir, sir i request you to make it as full screen because your slide is not moving sir no my slides are moving i am i am utilizing i don't sir, know why it is you make it your full screen sir Yes, yes. You you click on uh, at the bottom right side. Yeah, I know that, and I'm doing it. 
but it is not happening here in one in one of my device it is full screen but it is not coming i don't know why it is not coming uh, what is the problem it is moving yeah, now okay okay no problem i will move it so uh, need to store energy and uh, you need to store energy and uh, that is one of the way the type of capacitors and type of capacitors you we have three type of capacitors conventional one electrolytic and super capacitors they have the difference in the frequency range operational voltage and the amount of charge these three parameter differentiate three capacitors the voltage range the frequency range operational frequency is different for all three so it is increasing when you go from a to c when you go from a to c this is increasing okay and this is the comparative table between the batteries capacitors and carbon based dlcs and you see the difference the energy density is very high in batteries and this is the chemical energy basically which is uh converted into the electrical energy but here in the capacitors it is electrostatic charge storage only so there is no chemical energy but now this principle is not much valid in the case of the material smart material hybrid materials are you know in the picture so this storage mechanism is not valid and perfect now it is a mix there is a chemical energy there is a electrostatic energy storage so both kind of things are going on that's why we are able to increase its energy density energy density of capacitors close to the batteries and this is the reference of the book where you can read about this these parameters and this is the working mechanism the working mechanism of these two devices devices of that edlc type or okay sir please continue sir hello hello sir hello? you are audible please continue sir okay okay so uh, the capacitors are further divided in the two types the edlcs and the pseudo capacitors electrical double layer and pseudo capacitors and they are different due to their charge storage mechanism and the reactions are you know takes place at the electrode electrolyte interface which is mainly responsible for the capacitance or charge storage and if you will see the broad picture of charge storage for particularly for the edlcs for the electrical double layer capacitors that the charge is the charges these are the negative and positive charges which are going inside the pores and the porous carbon are being utilized the pores carbon are being utilized for this formation of electrode material active electrode material 
for supercapacitor application for ADLs, electrical double layer capacitors. And this is the physical barrier that is a separator between the two electrodes, which basically the separate the electronic conducting, electron conducting, semiconducting electrode material from the ion conducting electrolytes. Okay. So this is a broader picture. And then what are the targets? Target is how to improve the energy density and power density, of course. Basically, the energy density is keeping power same. Cheaper electrode is the one of the challenge. And cheaper and stable electrolyte with high ionic conductivity, this is another challenge. OK? So improved energy and cheaper electrode materials. So the MnO2 is one of the focus material. MnO2 and carbon this is the most popular material for the supercapacitor formation. And different types of structures, different types of technique has been adopted to utilize MnO2 as the electrode material. And recently, that uh, beyond this sputtering sputtering of MnO2 nanorods on the aluminum or uh, um, nickel uh, current collectors that we have recently tried with silver doped MnO2 and we have synthesized MnO2 with, uh, with some surfactants and try to manipulate its you know, microstructure the surface morphology and we got tremendously better results and you see we are able to you know if you will check this this is the you know video i would it is not i am not able to play this uh, we are able to glow this LED by using this super capacitor, only very, very tiny, very one centimeter type of one centimeter size of capacitor. And another cheaper material that is the carbon, the cheaper uh, material carbon that need to be supplied to the industry. That is, this is one of the challenge. We need to, uh, have new indigenous carbon materials for EDLC applications. And many people have tried different type of precursors. Here we are using some biomass, bio waste. And there are many types of bio waste reported in the literature to make the carbon. And carbon is a very useful carbon. You can utilize this carbon for biomedical application, for pharmaceutical, for um, uh, cleaning of water, for CO2 absorption, any any type of application where you need to a uh, you know adsorption absorption property you need. It's a material. Then it is a, a material which can be used. And this is a, you will see the BT surface area of this material and you see it is very high 2,090 meters square per gram. So we can utilize this whole surface for storage of charge. And we utilize such carbons and we compare these carbons with the CNTs. And we compare this carbon with the CNTs and we found that the C in, some, in some manner, the CNTs are better in some parameters, carbon, activated carbons are the better. And you see the charge storage is very, very high in the carbons, but the capacity behavior and you know, see the basically the charge storage is, charge storage is much, 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 you know, feasible. in CNTs at higher voltages. 
but if you will go for the low voltages then it is very very difficult at low voltages it is it is very very difficult there is some uh, technical problem you know my my slide is not sharing properly i am trying once again so yogesh sir at least you can the way you are showing uh, last time like that is uh, also okay i'm sharing once again okay sir kaushik sir was trying to say something kaushik sir is there ha ah, doctor uh, i was just trying to namaskar uh, sir सर नमस्कार नमस्कार सर कैसे हैं सर मैं बहुत अच्छा हूँ आप कैसे हैं सर बस सर मैं भी कुशल हूँ सर करिए वरना टाइम निकल जाएगा थोड़ा सा पढ़ाई आगे सर बहुत सर बहुत दिनों से आपसे मिलना नहीं हुआ है सर सर बिल्कुल शीघ्र ही मुलाकात करते हैं सर कहाँ तिमापुर में ही हैं आप नहीं नहीं यही हूँ दिल्ली में ही हूँ तो आज मिलते हैं शाम को ठीक है सर ठीक है आज मिलते हैं योगेश जी सर नमस्कार सर इस वाले में हमें भी बुला लेना अभी वाले में तुम बोलते जाओ थोड़ा सुनने के लिए हम लोग बेकर सर 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 <coughs> सर ये शेयर नहीं हो रही है मेरी स्क्रीन कोई बात नहीं शेयरिंग कौन सा हुआ है सर लास्ट लास्ट टाइम वाला आपका स्क्रीन दिख रहा था एटलीस्ट वो वैसे ही चलने दीजिए ना सर अरे नहीं ये ये शेयर ही नहीं हो रहा है अभी हाँ अभी आ गया है यू सी yeah. अभी आ गया क्या वी कॉन्ट वी कॉन्ट सी सर नहीं ये मुझे दिख रहा है शेयरिंग सर आपका एक्चुअली दो अकाउंट है ना सर हाँ दो अकाउंट है हाँ आप आप जिससे बात कर रहे हैं उससे एक बार कोशिश कीजिए और एक बार कोशिश कीजिए सर You are sharing another application window. ऐसे ऑप्शन आ रहा है ठीक है करके कर दीजिए फुल स्क्रीन कर दीजिए अभी तक तो नहीं आ रहा है कर दिया भाई एक सेकेंड I think there is some problem with sharing. Uh, so, Yogesh sir, maybe you can send it to Doctor Minal or uh, you can send it to me, sir. I can share from here and you can explain. Share is there. Hello, Yogi sir. Uh, can you continue? Hello. सर का एक जो अकाउंट था वो अभी लिंक नहीं है जिससे सर बात कर रहा था
Hello, Soumya sir, I don't know what to do because uh, he is not picking phone also, maybe some problem is there. So let's wait for two more minutes. Uh, if he joins, it's okay. Otherwise, we have to conclude the session. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Let's, uh, because uh, uh, sir has another account, I can't see, find that account. So there must be some problem. In case Soumya, Soumya. Yes, sir. मैं ये कह रहा हूँ कि अगर in case इनसे contact नहीं हो पाता है, तो कल हमारे पास जो बीच वाला time है, in between first session and last one session. Yes, sir. उसमें इनका हम ताक फिर से भी schedule कर सकते हैं, अगर Sure, sir. योग्य सर तैयार हो जाएं तो. That's better. टमोरो Yeah, so that, today that, that we are better. we are not able to contact him so it is my request that uh, dr somya pandit please conclude the session now okay <clears throat> so i think uh, as dr uh, inal gupta said uh, there is some problem so today we are concluding our uh, session tomorrow uh, we will have a five speaker uh, let me uh, tell you uh, that uh, we will have dr uh, Alexis Muriel, Dr. Sima Garg from Indian Institute of <clears throat> Applied Science, Amity University. Then Dr. Uh, Subendu Bhandari, Department of Plastic and Polymer Engineering, MIT, Aurangabad. Then Dr. Uh, Priyanka Maheshwari, Principal Scientist and uh, Assistant Professor, Advanced Carbon Product Group, CSR, uh, NPL. And finally, it will be uh, Dr. Ramkrishna Thakur. director research and academic affairs J jaipur national university so we will have uh, tomorrow five uh, speakers so i request all of you to join at uh, sharp at uh, 10:30 it will uh, we will start our uh, final day at 10:30 see you tomorrow bye